He calls me and tells me he crashed the bike due to a flat tire. Good morning guys, here's day two of the road trip. Now the only thing today is that it is raining right now, it's not bad. But we are definitely gonna get a little wet today. Is our nice little pool there. So here we are doing some last minute prepping for the rain. So the tip is put your sock inside the bag and then put your shoe over it. Just like that. Or you can be a dumbass and do it the Vietnamese way. <laughs> Packing up for the rain. It's going well so far. All right, we started out with a very rainy condition. We ended up buying poncho. These guys had to buy gloves and it's now starting to clear up. So we're gonna continue the journey up into the mountains where it's the most beautiful drive. And uh, hopefully it stays right. So Stretch's bike started leaking gasoline and kind of caught on fire right there. So he quickly found a motorcycle repair shop on the side of the road. So the beauty of taking a journey across Vietnam is that because motorcycles are so common here, you can find a motorcycle repair shop mechanic basically at every corner. The journey so far has been absolutely beautiful. You go from like the beach scenery, riding along the beach on the coast, to going up the mountain to the farm ramp, and then switchbacks left and right. We're like halfway to the lot right now, um, trying to get the bike repaired. That's a real mechanic right there. They cannot communicate to each other, but they are somehow helping each other out to get this bike started. Um, so there's a fuel leaking issue for one, and he's also cutting out up top. <laughs> it's so funny whenever I travel in these villages, anywhere in the world, I feel like I'm a local celebrity. C Zero Media, celeb status here in Vietnam. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it's good yeah. here. Kids are eating it. Yeah, like all the kids are having food. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's no good? No, no. No. It's, oh, look, it's a, it's a doctor. Literally inspecting a guy's ear out on the streets. Gotta have that about me. Like something. Wait, what did he do? Spark plug change? Spark plug change, fix my... Fuel issue, fuel yeah, leak fixed? Put some oil. And, put some oil and uh, fuel leak fixed it and then how much did it cost? $50,000 two dollars I'm US. never touching the tools again <laughs> that would have been at least $20 in the US at least now up on the mountains headed towards the lot absolutely beautiful right a little foggy as you get towards the top as you can see right now but the ride here is beautiful if you like riding leaning switchbacks you gotta take this road hey buddy hey 
Hey, party vehicle! <laughs> Look at this view, though! Alright guys, we made it to the Nang. It took longer than I thought. It took like six, seven hours. We had to get rain gear because it started raining. For my next trip, I'm gonna make sure I bring some kind of uh, waterproof pants because my pants are now soaked. And I'm standing here next to the fire, just trying to warm up, trying to get dry. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time today to go to Natra. We've got an additional 150 kilometers, about six, seven hour driving. So. We'll see how we feel after we fill up um, of eating food, but it's getting dark, it's wet, it's cold, it's nasty, it's uh, kind of a brutal day today. Beautiful though. Alright, so we have made the group decision to keep going tonight. It's uh, what time is it? 6 o'clock. And we have six, seven hour ride in the dark, you know, in the cold. So we'll see how we go. Uh, I'll let you know later when I get to the next destination. All right, guys, I want to pause real quick right here because I want to explain the situation we ran into after we departed. Long story short, coming down the mountain was beautiful. It was switchbacks left and right for like good two hours. No traffic. It was just me, Shresh, bombing down the mountain, like scraping our pegs, just destroying it. Togi style. So much fun. Had a blast. But after coming down the mountain, we had this straight road headed to our destination. So I'm tucked in doing 110 and all of a sudden I get a call from V, which is a little strange because there's no way you could get lost on this straight road and you only call somebody when you get lost or got left behind. He calls me and tells me he crashed the bike due to a flat tire. So I'm just like, holy shit. How are we gonna take V to the hospital? We're like two hours away from anywhere. We're in the middle of nowhere in Vietnam. We don't speak the language, it's midnight. We don't, we barely have cell phone signals out here. And uh, I was like, V, are you okay? And he has confirmed that he's okay. So I'm like, Phew. But, like, we gotta figure out the bike situation. We're still in the middle of nowhere. We still have two hours to the next destination, next town over. So I stop what I'm doing, turn around on the highway, and again, tuck in, do 110, all the way back to V, and here's what happened. All right, guys, it is now 10.36 p.m. We've been riding for about 12 hours today. I have never ridden a motorcycle for so long. The ride down from top to mountain, the lot was amazing. It was just continuous switchbacks and I'm glad we took the journey after we had food and continued on because there was literally nobody on the mountain. But now we have a flat tire. So we're gonna try to figure out if it just debated the tire or if it actually has puncture in it. Does that shit actually work? I have no idea. A bicycle? Yeah, Pump well, kind of like... thing. <laughs> so these guys just came out of nowhere to help us out. We're just trying to see if we can pump the tire back up. Now V's in there trying to negotiate with the truck drivers to take his motorcycle into the city for one million Vietnamese. They're saying no, so now he's in there in the gate, working his amazing negotiation skills. Good times. All right, so here's the deal. So we are gonna flag down a uh, truck passing okay. by, hopefully with we can walk for six hours. money flashing and uh, see if we can stop any of the trucks. I knew everything was going too well. <laughs> We're having too much fun. Well, this is exciting. Stopping random ass trucks in the middle of the road trying to negotiate. So we're able to flag down a semi truck and for one million Vietnamese we're gonna try and figure out if we can load up the motorcycle in the back of the sink. And we're gonna have to pick it up, push the boxes. There you go. <laughs> Now the bike is on the truck. This is a road trip. All right guys, we made it. 
Oh, thank you so much to the truck driver for uh, making this happen. Checking in at the Sheraton Hotel in style. People here at the lobby are like, what the hell are these people doing here? Alright, so a couple of things to take away from today's episode. First thing is that do not attempt to do a motorcycle road trip across Vietnam or any foreign country for that matter by yourself. I know some people have done road trip across Vietnam by themselves. I highly, highly advise that you do not do that for your own safety and so that you can share the experience, right? As exhausted as we were riding 12 hours in a cold rain dark situation, we were having so much fun. One thing I realized with motorcycle road trip is that when you're driving a car on a cross country road trip, which I've done for like up to a month or two, is that you start to get bored. You fall asleep as a passenger, you kind of doze off as a driver and you're not exactly there. You have the windshield blocking you from the environment. But when you're on a motorcycle, uh, I don't know why, maybe because you are on your own and you're just this close away from death that even though you're tired physically, you are aware mentally. So even with the 12 hour riding day in a cold, uh, rainy, dark condition, we were smiling. As I was doing switchbacks left and right, I see Shresh coming up to me and I'm just like smiling away and he's smiling away and we're all having fun. So that's like something I've never experienced before in my life. And as a tip that I'm going to implement on my next road trip is that you should bring a walkie talkie and mount it on the handlebar. So if anything does happen, uh, if we didn't have cell phone signals, luckily I have an international cell phone, but Shresh does not. I will have no way of me finding out that he has crashed until it's too late and he has no way of telling us that he has crashed. So bring a long distance walkie talkie. So there's just a few points that you probably should take away from this video um, like I said I want to keep these road trip videos entertaining but also educational so you can do it for yourself with ease so thanks again for watching the video guys if you haven't hit the like button please hit that like button if you want to see the next episode please do subscribe and hit the notification button so you are notified when it releases thanks again see you in the next episode